So, Catherine, five minutes if you can. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to start by uh, thanking the organizers of this session for not only facilitating my virtual participation at last, uh, but also for challenging me to queer knowledge maps in digital archaeology. For those of you where our queer archaeology is perhaps foreign territory, I only have a few minutes. I'm going to set you the homework of reading the literature that's on the bottom left of the screen, and I can send it to you if you want. Um, but a swift definition, care of the concise Oxford Dictionary of Archaeology, is that um, its approaches that actively and explicitly challenge the heteronormativity of scientific practice by seeking to take the perspective of anyone who feels marginalized sexually, intellectually, or culturally. Many queer archaeology publications and groups also tie this to considering the position of queer researchers in archaeology today, much in the same way that feminist archaeology considered the position of women past present. As an alternative to normative archaeological discourse, queer archaeology has contributed greatly to the creative disruptive developments of contemporary archaeology that I think the organizers of this session and many of us more broadly seek to celebrate and also encourage digital archaeology. So the ways in which it draws on creative media to push the boundary in um, how we imagine people in the past and present, but also more subtle disruptions such as the ways in which Digital communications are used to amplify diverse voices, share codes of conduct, inclusive policies, or even facilitate whisper and work that keeps people safe. In this sense, I can imagine a wonderfully complex and detailed queer knowledge map, but there's also a hitch. Knowledge maps themselves in seeking to illuminate where knowledge resides, as described in the session overview, do in fact maintain heteronormative scientific practice because they were on the principle that everyone and everyone's knowledge is equal, equally safe, equally celebrated, and equally accessible. Unfortunately, this ignores that even today, being queer or even being associated with a whiff of queerness through the reference to queer is not only a risk, but in many contexts, very dangerous. And this is where queer knowledge maps perhaps deviate from others that are often entangled with queer theory, uh, for instance, feminist and indigenous scholarship. Queer identities in the ways that they are often seen to be invisible, largely from the perspective that they're not necessarily physically identifiable or treated as a visible minority, which is a whole other discussion for another day. They can become cloaked in suspicion, which alone is often enough to trigger threats, aggression, and harassment both within and beyond archaeology. But even the experience of visibility is incredibly diverse across queer identities, where the experience of some is incredibly visible to the point of constant exposure to risk, while others are invisible or straight passing, but often having to stress over when and how to come out and being invisible to even members of their own community. This visibility and invisibility, like so many things, exists also on a spectrum. And it's not to say that one point on that spectrum is more or less difficult, or that it is worse than experiences of racism, sexism, ableism, transphobia, et cetera. But in the words of a Canadian queer author, Ivan Coyote, it is more it is not more difficult, it is just different. And I think that is what queer archaeology really offers, an understanding of these experiences as being different as being marginalized, um, but also in such so much more than that. So what does all of this have to do with knowledge maps then? Um, I can tell you that there is an incredible world of passionate, committed, scientific, theoretical, and exceptional scholarship that exists, unfortunately, within a closet. For me, this is also a Narnia of sorts, because I found some heritage in many ways, my own voice, in looking back on the ways in which Queer archaeologists have queer computational and digital archaeologies from the beginning. There are Easter eggs left in their work, a nod <laughs> to the others out there, um, which we also would respond the, with the I see there. But so many times when I reference queer legacies in archaeology and in digital practice, I am asked for evidence and can provide none with the honor of that shall not out another. So to create knowledge maps without queer archaeology, or even with our, those archaeologists who are out using queer approaches, whether they themselves are queer or allies, 
still upholds a lot of inequities that we struggle against in academia, in digital archaeology, etc. Because it contributes to a richer and continues to privilege those who have already been the most privileged and the most secure. So instead, I cannot really offer you much in the way of a knowledge map. If you find this unsatisfying, science without evidence, knowledge maps without citations, and in a large way, I do hope that you find this deeply, deeply unsatisfying, I can offer one suggestion to you today, and it is to find ways to make it safe for everyone and for everyone's knowledge. Then we can truly talk about inclusive and queered knowledge maps. Thank you.